Most of us want to live a healthy and happy life. But do we know what factors and variables are influencing our life, health, and happiness? We all know some of them. Others are lesser known, many intertwine and complement each other. Each of the following factors and variables can and should have specialized video. But we will see if what I do is interesting for you, my watchers, subscribers, and future subscribers. I would like to make a whole series of those specialized videos. And after that, whole series of self-help videos in the future. Maybe with your help and support, I will do it one day as my part-time job. Please, if you will find this video helpful or interesting, like, comment, share and subscribe to my channel. Please, don't take anything in this video personally. It intends only to help. The order of factors and variables is intentionally without prioritization. Let's get started with the first factor that is influencing our life, health, and happiness. Genetics or genome of the individual, we know today that 99.9% .9 of the human genome is the same in all of us. The rest, 0.1% of the individual genetic variations makes each of us unique individual human beings. That 0.1% is still equal to 3 million individual genetic variations that determine many characteristics, such as eye color and blood type, as well as how will be different in many metabolical functions, how susceptible a person is to a particular disease, various sources of stress, drugs, nutrients, among many others. So genome is the base block that we inherited from our ancestors. As we will talk about later, we can still affect our genome by many lifestyle modifications. So it doesn't mean it will be lost cause, because we are carriers of some genes. Epigenetics Or realization of the genome under the effects of the living conditions, this field of science is studying how the genome of each of us is working under the pressure of our behavior and environment. Both affect the way how our genome and body is working. Most of the epigenetic changes are reversible and don't last further if the factor or variable of our behavior and or environment ceases. So, those changes are working as activators or deactivators for different genes that we have in our genome. For a very simplified example, when your diet, physical activity, sleeping regime, and levels of many stress factors are fully managed and personalized for you, health genes are activated and disease genes are deactivated. So as we can understand we need to have some genes and also they should be activated or deactivated as we wish. Only after that we will feel that change in our life. Our life can go in many ways, fully badly, fully good, or something between these two ways. So, we are the directors and managers of our life. Intergenerational transfer of stress and early life stress, this point is very important in many ways. Parents under very high levels of physical, mental, emotional, and social stress factors, transfer this stress to their offsprings. That is caused by stress changes in the genome of their germ cells. And also that stress acts during the development of the fetus in the uterus, by many changes in the mother's body internal environment. For example, specific stress factors can be hunger and malnutrition, war, bad living conditions, overworking, overtraining, sleep deprivation, noise, toxic substances in the foods and water and in the living environment. Physical, mental, and emotional abuse. Drinking alcohol, smoking cigarettes, doing drugs, abusing different medicines. Poor hygiene, low education, low social status, low social and communication skills, low stress coping skills, very few friendly or important contacts, among many others. The same factors are genetically, physiologically, mentally, and emotionally programming the kids after childbirth. Kids become a product of their environment and behaviors of their parents or other caregivers. For example in some parts of Africa, there are many people with very low IQ but it is because of malnutrition. I studied that deeply and it is one of the worst tragedies on the place of the earth today. They don't have sufficient nutrition that their brain could grow and function to its normal or full potential. 
I am still angry from the first time I found that as a kid. It must be solved. I will try to talk about his topic much more in some of the next videos. Individual tolerability to stress, according to the newest survival theory, not the fittest, but the most adaptable to change will survive. We can't fully change our genetic makeup. And only to some degree can we change some hardwired personality traits. But every one of us can change his perceiving, behavior, environment, or all of them. To survive and prosper in life, to decrease levels of stress. In his or her life, or life of the beloved people. It needs some general intelligence, emotional and social intelligence. Inspiration, creativity, ideas, goals, purposes for life, motivation, and bull-like persistence on the way to change. Each person can be better as he or she is right now. Tolerate stress better, thanks to useful and helpful changes in life. Healthy developed, kind family, family is the cornerstone of the state, and place for raising healthy and happy people. People, who can add good values for people around them and the world as such. Many people don't understand each other in this aspect about family. One would like to live in his or her three-generational family forever. The other one doesn't like his or her family environment. Trying to get out of the house ASAP. Not spend time there with his not-so-good parents and quarrelsome siblings. Another child only dreams of family. But it is living as an orphan on the street selling gums in the nightclubs as some bon choy. Some other physically and mentally abused and emotionally neglected child matures to be a serial killer. Or to be a new Hitler, because something essential that child needs were broken in him. And it is broken and were not or can not be repaired. As we can see from those examples, family is the cornerstone, refuge, or hell on the earth. Or can be unknown to a child. Who chooses to start a family, choosing a life partner is one of the most important decisions in life. I personally please you, choose wisely and preferably by the hearth and wide open eyes. Education and self-development, this point is all only a very simple generalization, not a rule. It can be very different for each of us in the reality. Please, don't take it personally, only as a raw information and its overall meaning. Not all people who are academically educated and have titles and are working as academics are intelligent in all areas of life. Academicians are usually specialists but can be struggling in relatively simple things in life that average normally living people don't. There are many different reasons for that and we will not talk about it maybe in some next video. High academic intelligence is not equal to any other type of intelligence that the person can and should have to function normally in life. So, education is very important, but the same are many other life skills and types of intelligence. Like social, emotional, and very simply put, practical intelligence for not complicate life. Self-development should be always pointed to the parts of intelligence that should be developed better. And all of us have some strengths but also weaknesses. So for practical people let's say some academic intelligence, general and broader perspective on life. Deeper understanding of current topics. Better communication and expression skills, and deeper understanding of some things could be all the parts of their self-development. For academics it may be let's say working on practically simplifying their thinking and feeling processes. Working on conventional communication and small talks with everyone. Improving social skills in any environment. Working on social and emotional intelligence, being more assertive, and if the situation demands it, aggressive. Upbringing, primary caregivers as parents, grandparents, some institutional care workers, TV, PC, mobile phones, internet, or streets, can form the child as they wish and can. Seemingly unimportant habits and educational patterns of upbringing in early life and adolescence, can accompany human beings all their life. We can think of every well-taught educational pattern of thinking and behavior as new software, that the brain of the child will install and realize many times in the rest of their life. 
This software can be taught correctly only by the example, not by the words. Children know and feel and can differentiate very effectively what is real and what is only idealistically spoken good words. So don't raise your children, first raise yourself. Because your children will look at you as role model, what you are and what you do, not what you tell them they should be and do, without your real example in daily life. Surely, there are exceptions to this rule, but generally speaking, it is true. Living environment and conditions, as we were speaking about epigenetics, we pointed this theme once. At this point, we look at it differently. Speaking from the broader point of view, people on the earth are living in different locations, climates, socio-economic cultural and political backgrounds. People from let's say, Switzerland, usually don't live in the poverty and have greatly developed infrastructure of state and high standard of living in all the parts of life. Hygiene is great, they don't live in the ghettos or huts. The climate in Switzerland has four seasons and it seems to be a nice and calm place to live. Let's say in the United States of America, Equatorial Guinea, China, India, Hungary, Russia, Australia, Brazil in each country and its parts, that can be a very different story in comparison of all the specific aspects of Switzerland. We all are people, but our environments and conditions of life are very different. From the toxicological point of view, many places on the earth are contaminated by various accumulating and non-accumulating chemicals. They are usually byproducts of industry and agriculture. Or can be emitted environmentally by the geochemical composition of the soil through the human food chain, water, or other ways of exposure. We can't go deep here and right now, but summarily speaking, those chemicals can have many negative health effects on the different organs of the body, their structures and functions. For example, some heavy metals and pesticides are known for their negative health effects on the structures and functions of the reproductive organs of men and women. That was the last point for today. Thank you very much for your attention and time. In this video, we briefly mentioned some of the many factors and variables that are affecting our lives health, and happiness. I will try to do my best in the next videos with other factors and variables and then with solutions. There are so many important topics and information, that all people should know more about. So that they can optimize and better manage their life to be healthy, happy, useful, and helpful for others. If you find our video helpful or interesting, please like, comment, share, and subscribe. I will be very glad and motivated by your support for the next videos. Thank you so much. Have a nice and successful day.